to go. May we, the councillors of Karingai, always be aware that decisions we make affect the daily lives of those we represent. May we make these decisions with knowledge and goodwill, respecting the views of others, and we wish, may we show ourselves worthy to follow in the footsteps of those who have protected the special qualities of Karingai for over 100 years. Amen. On behalf of Council, I recognise the traditional custodians of the land, the Garingai people on whose land we meet. I would like to outline a few points regarding this evening's proceedings. Tonight's meeting will be live streamed on the Council website at www.krg.nsw.gov.au forward slash live stream. Only councillors and council staff will be shown on the camera. The webcast of the meeting is available on council's website. The webcast will commence once the mayor is seated and will cease if council goes into a confidential session. Where the public and press are excluded, pursuant to section 10A of the Local Government Act. Council meetings remain open to the public as observers, but in line with the code of meeting practice, speakers will now address the council through the monthly public forums and not at a council meeting. For more information about addressing council, please visit our website at www.krg.nsw.gov.au. All present tonight must remain, refrain from engaging in disorderly conduct publicly alleging breaches of the Council's Code of Conduct or making other potentially defamatory statements. Councillors and Council staff must declare and manage any conflicts of interest they may have in relation to any item of business that is the subject of the meeting agenda this evening. We move to apologies, and all councillors are here present tonight. General Manager, is there any staff apologies? There are none, Mr Mayor. Thank you, General Manager. Declarations of interest. Any councillors with any, any declarations of interest? There being none, General Manager, is there any staff declarations? None from the staff, Mr Mayor. Thank you, General Manager. Documents circulated to councillors. Uh, Mr Mayor and councillors, the late councillors' information contains three items. Uh, a late Mayor or Minute 1, proposed contribution to the New South Wales flood recovery effort. GB Item 9, revised delivery program 2018 to 2022, and operational plan 2021 to 2022, December biannual report. And at this juncture, I'll note, councillors, that GB 2 and GB 9 cover the same matter. So if a councillor wishes to move the recommendation for that matter, I suggest you move the recommendation contained in GB 9 and GB2 will automatically become redundant. And the last item on late council's information is a response, a supplementary response to a question with notice. Uh, number one, for the purpose of transparency and good governance. Thank you, General Manager. Confirmation of reports to be considered in closed meeting. Mr Mayor and Councillors, no reports. There are attachments on two items, GB4, the draft overt electronic surveillance in public places policy attachment two and question with notice number one for the purpose of transparency and good governance attachment three. And we have to move that those remaining confidential. Move to Councillor Spencer, second Councillor Smith. All those in favour? That is unanimous. Councillors, we move on to confirmation of minutes. And I seek a move for the confirmation of minutes. Moved Councillor Wheatley, seconded Councillor Ward. All those in favour? That is unanimous. Minutes from the Mayor. Councillors, you will have received a late memorandum, which is a mayoral minute. <coughs> in which I'll give you time to bring that up or open up that particular 
piece of paper. And this is in regards to the proposed contribution to the New South Wales flood recovery effort. The last two weeks have been nothing short of devastating for many areas of our state. Kuringai has thankfully been spared the worst of the flood's effects, but there are many people in Western Sydney who have suffered great damage and loss. Losses have been even greater in northern New South Wales, in the Lismore and Ballina communities, with some heartbreaking stories emerging of uninhabitable homes, businesses destroyed and personal possessions lost forever. Sadly, people have also lost their lives to the worst floods in living memory. The scale of this disaster is such that every level of government needs to step up and provide assistance. I know that many in our community are coordinating practical help, such as donations, food deliveries, and replacement household goods. Thank you for everything you are doing to assist these communities in the worst hit areas. In recognition of the scale of this disaster, and the huge rebuilding effort required. I would like to propose that Karingai Council provide immediate assistance in the form of a $5,000 donation to the following charities. 3,000 to give it, which all donations go directly to flood victims. $1,000 to the Salvation Army. $1,000 to the Red Cross. These are charities providing immediate, on-the-ground support to those who are in most need. I move that Council approve a one-off donation of 5,000 split between the charities outlined in this mayoral minute. And I call on any councillors that wish to speak to this mayoral minute. I'll speak to it, seeing I wrote it. It is extremely hard and hard to comprehend us in the city, what our country folk and our people in, in the Hawkesbury have gone through, again, in such a short period of time. You know, we hear, we've heard of the one in a hundred year flood. We've had two in two years. So anything that we can do to help out these communities will be greatly appreciated. It is a token gesture, it's $5,000. They will not require so much more but hopefully all councils are chipping in just as we have done. So if there are no further speakers, I'll move the, the mayoral minute. All those in favour? That is unanimous. Move to petitions. There are none in the business papers un unless anybody has any late petitions. Councillors, oh, you've got your light on very quickly. Thank you. I can see a finger there poised. <laughs> we move to the recommendations from the traffic committee and the minutes to be moved. And I seek a move. Councillor Spencer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to move um, the minutes as per um, officer's recommendation. Uh, meaning KTC01, KTC02, except KTC03, um, where it should be brought back to the next meeting, next traffic meeting. Thank you. We can do that in its seriatim, if, if you wouldn't mind. Councillor Spencer, we could do uh, KTC01 and 2 together. All those in favour of KT. C zero one and two being put. That is unanimous. Councillor Spencer, we then move to KTC zero three. And you're moving that it be brought back to the next meeting. Um, would you like to know the reason why? That's okay. Um, we just need a second it before you can okay. speak. I'll second. Second it, Councillor Wheatley. Councillor Spencer, fire away. All right, so in the last meeting, uh, there were some administrative uh, issues where um, the committee members were not presented with uh, all uh, submissions. There were a number of submissions that were excluded. 
and therefore we are moving, uh, sorry, I'm moving that the matter be brought back to the uh, committee with all the uh, submissions uh, distributed to the members uh, for uh, review. And I've spoken to um, Director Bonasev about this as well. And, and he's aware of the, uh, the issue. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Spencer as seconder. Councillor Wheatley doesn't wish to speak on that. Um, is there any people that wish to speak on Councillor Kay. I've just got a um, question through you, um, Mr Mayor, to George Benassif, the Director of Operations, just confirming that that is the case and it was a, an operational issue as such. Um, with those minutes, if you don't mind. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, uh, that is correct. Thank you. I might just ask a question to Councillor Kay. Did you need any further clarification as to the reasons for the administrative error that occurred? Why not that you've asked? So can you elaborate, please? Um. <laughs> Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, uh, KTC03 related to a wombat crossing out the front of um, a resident, um, Mr Whitington. Um, the, Mr. Whitington emailed three submissions during the consultation period. Uh, two of those three submissions were tabled at the KTC um, in error. Uh, the first submission dated 1 February was not tabled at the KTC. Thank you. That suffices. Thank you, Director Benassif. I think that was important just to clarify the, the reasons behind what the errors might have been. So that all, all concerned know exactly what happened and what didn't happen. Got to move that, don't we? So therefore there'd be no further speakers on that. I move, as per Councillor Spencer's, that it be referred back to the next meeting. All those in favour? That is unanimous. Yes. I now invite councillors to nominate any items on the agenda that they wish to have a site inspection. There being no inclination of site inspection, we move on to that. I now invite councillors to nominate any items on the agenda that they wish to adopt in accordance with the officer's recommendation, allowing for minor changes without debate. Councillor Spencer, quick off you. the mark again. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Excellent. No, I'll try. I'll try and make this as uh, quickly as possible. Uh, feel free to uh, withdraw if there's anything that is uh, of interest uh, to you, fellow councillors. So I move GB1 uh, as per officer's recommendation. Moved, Councillor Spencer. Seconded, Councillor Smith. All those in favour? That is unanimous. GB2 officer's recommendation. Uh, you need to refer that has been replaced by GB9. How do we do this? Uh, just move GB9. That's GB9? Yep. All right. So moving GB9, move so count. G, so yep. just to clarify, GB2 yep. is void then, and we'll come to GB9 when we get there. If you, if you wish, or you can oh, move GB9. we can GB9. move it now. All yep. right. So GB9, uh, officer's recommendation. Yep. Move Councillor Spencer for GB9, seconded Councillor Smith. All those in favour? That is unanimous. GB3, officer's recommendation. GB3 moved Councillor Spencer, seconded Councillor Lennon. All those in favour? That is unanimous. GB4, officer's recommendation. Let's move Councillor Spencer, seconded Councillor Wheatley. All those in favour? That is unanimous. GB5, officer's recommendation. Moved Councillor Spencer, seconded Councillor Ward. All those in favour? That is unanimous. GB6, officer's recommendation. Move Councillor Spencer, seconded Councillor Smith. All those in favour? That is unanimous. GB7, officer's recommendation. Move Councillor Spencer, seconded Councillor Smith. All those in favour? That G is unanimous. GB8, officer's recommendation. GB8 With withdrawn. is withdrawn. Withdrawn. And we have done GB9. Correct. And I believe. 
That is it. Thank you. Uh, sorry? We could, we could do it with no GB. Thank you. If you want to do NM1 and come back, we could just do it with GB8. Just withdrawn. As we were at the last GB item, which was GB8, we can deal with that, then move on to the NMs, if that's good. Yes. Councillor Smith, GB8. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I would just like to move an amendment. I'll move the amendment if I can, just uh, up. It's not an amendment, Member. Oh, you're moving a motion with sorry, possibly Sorry, I'd like wording. to move an amendment, please, on the motion on GB8. Councillors, just a little bit of time to digest the new wording. So just on um, GB8, I would just like to, on point B, that council write to the local state members of parliament expressing council's concern with the proposed amalgamation of the B1 local zone with the B2 neighbourhood zone, uh, centre zone. Got the wording? Yeah. Councillor Smith, if you could repeat that. I'll so. just repeat that, sorry. Yeah. Uh, that council write to the local state members of parliament expressing council's concerns with the proposed amalgamation of the B1 local centre zone with the B2 neighbourhood centre zone. Okay, they're just tidying up and a seconder for this motion, seconded Councillor Spencer. Councillor Smith. Uh, look, it's a pretty straightforward um, amendment on this. Basically, uh, just reading through the report, uh, my concerns are it's the employment zones reform that the state government has actually uh, requested from all, council, all councils in New South Wales. Uh, I just would like to make it clear that this is a, a planning reform that has been instructed on the council with all other councils, as I just said prior. What, it, what it's designed to do is to increase flexibility by expanding land uses, which I understand um, what the state, New South Wales state government is trying to achieve with this. But by both combining B1 and B2 consolidated into an E1 local centre, um, Kringai, there are going to be areas of Kringai that are going to be affected and people that are living, these, living in these neighbourhoods. If I may, through you, could I please um, ask a question of Director Watson to explain on the report where it refers to the risk management in the report, as I believe that this will clear up uh, what some of the issues are going to be with this. Thank you. Thank you. Director Watson. Um, Three, Mr Mayor. The, pr the principal difference is that uh, there's a, the neighbourhood centre zone currently allows effectively a, f a fairly fine grain detail um, and that would be um, effectively uh, taken away from council by com combining the two zones. Um, so you, you won't get that fine grain of shops that we see in our neighbourhood centres. You know, places like, uh, like Marion Street and Karingai will be treated the same as much larger um, enterprise zones or business zones. Thank you, Director. Councillor Smith. Thank you, Dr. Director Watson. I'd just sort of like to further expand where it basically states here on the E1 local centre zones. The existing B1 neighbourhood centre and B2 local centre zones are consolidated into a single new E1 local centre zone. The new E1 local centre zone has a number of mandated land uses that were prohibited under the B1 neighbourhood centre zone that will now be permitted with consent including commercial premises, neighbourhood centres were previously limited to business premises, neighbourhood shops and neighbourhood supermarkets, amusement centres, function centres, hotel and motel accommodation. These land uses generally require larger floor areas and due to their size and nature 
of use have the potential to adversely impact on the residential amenity of the surrounding low density. And um, that's the reason why I've actually brought this forward for our local um, rep state representatives so that they can um, hopefully look at addressing this for us with the planning minister. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith. A seconder, Councillor Spencer. <coughs> I'll just reserve my rights. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Spencer. Any further dis discussion on the matter? Councillor Smith, do you wish to sum up? I'll just quick, uh, quickly wrap up. Um, look, I just think, again, I don't think that this was um, deliberate by the New South Wales State Government. It's a one shoes uh, fits all that they're trying to apply, and I believe that we are going to have residents in Karengai that are going to be affected with this. I think it's important that we actually give this type of information to our New South Wales government representatives so that they can represent us in state parliament. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Councillor Spencer, Smith and Spencer <coughs> for this motion. Um, all those in favour? That is unanimous. <coughs> Councillors, we moved on. on to the notice of motions. We have NM1 which is the walkway in Taramara, which is Councillor Wheatley's motion. Um, move Council it as it is printed. Sorry. Thank you, Councillor Wheatley. Um, going to move it as, as it is printed. And a seconder, Councillor Alec Taylor. Councillor Wheatley, would you care to speak to your motion? Yes. Um, so this is really important to a number of, number of people in the local community. Um, Liddy has actually been um, upgrading this walkway since 1991 and she's done it in her own time and she's done it at her own expense. And I encourage all the councillors, if they have time, to go and view this stunning walkway. So, thanks. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Wheatley. Councillor Alec Taylor, a seconder. Thanks, Mr Mayor. I just wanted to say that I think this is a great opportunity to demonstrate um, applauding and celebrating volunteering and community spirit. So um, I strongly endorse this particular motion. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Any other speakers on the matter? Councillor Kay, I can see you're keen. I just have a question through you, um, Mr yes. Mayor, to Director George Benassif. Um, can you let us know what options would be available for this on-site recognition? of acknowledgement or ones you've done in the past of a similar nature. Thank you. Through you, Mr Mayor. Um, in my time here at Council, I haven't uh, done um, any recognition um, for any uh, volunteer work. Um, I will liaise with uh, the manager of comms um, to uh, look at all sorts of options. Um, options could include um, a plaque, could include a letter from the mayor, um, a sign of some sort. Um, yeah, so I'll liaise with the manager of comms and develop a strategy moving forward. Thank you, Director. Uh, Councillor Kay. Question: um, Is there any chance that those can be brought back to us as options? Director. Three, Mr. Mayor. Um, the resolution would have to state bringing it back to council for adoption. Um, Councillor Wheatley and Mike, yeah. can I get governance to add that that comes back? What period of time do you think that would take you? And I could put a time frame on that. Uh, through Mr Mayor, uh, I think May would be a fair Time. Bring it back to the May OMC. So, Councillor Kay, if we just put those words in and then we'll confirm that with Councillor Wheatley, that that's acceptable, if you want to just word that time frame. We need to make that the, yes, thank you, as opposed to just generally in May. Thank you. Councillor Whitley, you're happy with that words? And a seconder, Councillor Taylor, you're all good with that? Thank you. 
Councillors, Councillor Ward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a question: Does this form part of a volunteer program, and do we have a volunteer program where, where we recognise such things? Director Bevan. Mr. Mayor and Councillors, uh, we do have a volunteer rec recognition program which we usually conduct in Volunteer Week. So we could certainly do something like that as well um, and make sure that, uh, that this lady is recognised during Volunteer Week. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ward. Any other speakers on the matter? I'll round it out. Councillor Wheatley, this is an outstanding motion. It's something that's certainly come out of left field. It's not something you see every day. And, and it's good. It is really good that we're actually recognising somebody that's gone out of their way to do something good for the community, just out of the goodness of their heart. And hopefully we'll be able to find more examples of this across the LGA and certainly encourage our residents to do it. They don't do it just have a name on a plaque or whatever, they just do it because it's the right thing to do. They enjoy it, they give back to it, and hopefully in future we'll be able to bring back more of these sort of notices and motions, recognising outstanding volunteer work within our community. So Councillor Wheatley, once again, well done on this one. Councillors, no further discussion or debate. I put the motion. All those in favour? That is unanimous. Council, as we move to NM2, <coughs> which is a Marion Street theatre design, which is a notice of motion from councillors Lennon, Pettit and Ward. And I wish to move a different motion, which is being brought up on the screen. I'll leave that up there for you, for you to digest the wording. Councillors, you've all had time to digest that, and I seek a seconder, seconded Councillor Smith. Councillors, we are, as they say, going back to the future. This project has been a long time in the making. Amongst you, there is one councillor who was there when this project was conceived and first brought to us by a group of wonderful volunteers who come up with a great design for this building as a concept design. Without that, this project may never have actually started to bear fruit. It was a design that I wholeheartedly supported. I could see a vision for this particular location. What had happened in the past is we were ploughing money into an old, tired building, year in, year out, and going nowhere fast. Without that architectural design from Luke and John Town and, and that particular group, we would have just been going around in circles again. We've spent a long time since that original concept to get to the DA stage. We have seen, thanks to Councillor Spencer, all the design artwork in the business papers. It is now on the website as well, thanks to Councillor Spencer and his question. Councillors, you've also received the business plan, something which no previous council had seen. So you've seen the new version. We have the DA in place. You have the business case. <coughs> Councillors, have you received any adverse reaction from what has been presented in the business papers over the last two weeks from anyone? 
Has anybody said this is a bad design? This is a bad concept. Is this something we don't want? I certainly haven't received any flood of emails or phone calls saying this is bad. If anything, when we had our briefing, I think there was unanimous support that this is a very good design and concept going forward. I put it to you, councillors. The wider community wants this done. They are overall happy with this concept and design where it's at at the moment. We have the DA, we're down to the, almost the finishing line of getting it underway. The next biggest hurdle would be the funding. We can deal with that down the track. But we won't even get to that particular point if we keep delaying or stopping or revisiting a concept which has been widely accepted. We know that we cannot go any bigger than 249 seats. We visited the various options in the various locations in previous councils when we were looking at potentially putting it in the Gordon Centre. Bigger and better, that was rejected. We've done the analysis. We've gone out to some of the best theatre design experts based on our brief to come up with a good project. Is it 100% perfect? No. Is it close to that? Probably. 80, 90%? Not too bad. That's a pretty good result. I would endorse this motion and I hope to receive unanimous support. Thank you. And a second to Councillor Smith. Mr Mayor, I'll reserve my right for the moment. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Councillor Spencer. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I would like to speak in favour of this uh, motion and I thank you and uh, Councillor Smith for putting this motion forward. Uh, I just have a, um, uh, a question, uh, although it is, uh, uh, it, is, it is just for general knowledge, um, whatever the amount may be, uh, I think it is good that we cut our losses uh, now and, you know, uh, and resume work on uh, this project and have it delivered uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, that, was the, um, that was the intent of the uh, previous council uh, and there were numerous meetings and iterations and all those things. So my, my uh, uh, quick question would be uh, how much have we incurred um, to date? So your, your question would be, how much have we incurred to date as far as the design uh, the, DA? No, 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 sorry, the, the cost, what, the uh, cost? For, for the suspension of work from February ah, Okay, thank you. I just wanted thank to you. clarify. Director um, Watson. Through you, Mr Mayor. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I sent out uh, um, a detailed response from um, Peter Tonkin of Tonkin's Lake uh, Greer. Um, he detailed a number of scenarios that may lead to additional costs. Um, the only fixed fee was, um, was 13800 and uh, we haven't been billed for anything yet as we haven't got to the end of a, of a billing month. Um, so whether any of the other points outlined in that email of 28 February apply or not, Councillor Spencer, I can't answer that question yet, but it's at least 13800 um, plus the cost of preparation for a meeting which we had uh, tentatively scheduled for tomorrow. So. I understand that. If I may have a follow-up. Thank you, Director. Yes, Councillor Spencer. So I, I did read that email, and I think it was like 13000 or something. Um, could the uh, Director, now this is not to hold back the NM or anything, uh, then uh, when the amount is ascertained, could the Director perhaps send a memo to all the councillors so that we know? Direct Thank you. Director. I'm more than happy to do that, Mr May. Thank you, Director Watson. Councillor Spencer, no further questions at this point in time? That's all right. Councillor Kay. Thank you. So I'll ask the question that I think you were asking Spencer, if he was Councillor Spencer, if he was asking before, and that's in relation to the costs of Marion Street. So with the whole development, redevelopment, how much have we spent so far on consultants, architects, etc.? So I gather that's probably Director Watson or Director Marshall, either or. Director Watson? Uh, 
through you, Mr Mayor. Um, and I can't recall off the top of my head whether this went out in an email to all councillors, uh, but uh, expenses to date uh, was $886,822.50, and there are commitments in the system of another $307,505.22. Thank you, Director, and I do recall that email going out with those figures, which I believe all councillors would have received, so. Yeah, that's that just for the sake of transparency. Absolutely, much and appreciated. Also for the sake of transparency, can you just um, clarify, um, has it been approximately eight years in the making, this redevelopment of Marion Street? Director Watson. Um, through you, Mr Mayor. Uh, that probably depends on what you consider to be the starting point. Um, Tonkins Alika Greer was appointed to do some work on this project before I commenced with council. Um, so that would have been 14 years ago. Thank you, thank you. That's definitely more than eight, thank you. Oh, also, I believe Councillor Spencer's asking me if that could be also placed in an emo, if you don't mind. Uh, Director Watson, could also that, that time frame be added into the memo? Or just the, the, the ex expenses? That I, can, I can do that, Mr Mayor, but the expenses that I just quoted relate to the current iteration of design, not earlier iteration Not the earlier. Design. Okay. So we might leave that one. Councillor Taylor. <coughs> um, I just have a, a question. I, I'm just interested in um, uh, how, how much community uh, engagement has, has been a part of this whole project. When has community been engaged throughout the whole process? Director Watson. Uh, through, you, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, it may be that the uh, manager of corporate communications supplements my answer, but uh, there has been specific uh, consultation in relation to the development application. There was a community reference committee going in relation to this project for some three years. Uh, at one point in time, we had some specific consultation, including telephone surveys with the community um, and some opt-in work, I believe. I'm getting the nod on the website in relation to exactly what was required. Um, it's been uh, outlined and discussed in a number of um, corporate planning documents, integrated planning and reporting documents over Maybe. at least two four-year cycles. Um, so I would say it's been uh, reasonably well, specifically consulted and, and widely published. Thank you, Director. Councillor Taylor. Uh, um, when was the last time the community had any consultation on this? Director. Watson? Uh, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, that would have been through the formal development application process. Um, once the development <coughs> consent was issued, um, the resolution of council was to proceed directly to finally document the development as approved. Uh, how long ago was that? So I guess the question would be what year, approximately? Uh, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, I believe that was last year, mid-2021. Mid-2021. Which led to a notice of motion from Councillor Chateau to bring forward funding, which I think was in the April meeting of last year, 2021. Yes, that is correct, Director Watson. Councillor Taylor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Councillor Lennon. I oppose this motion. And I oppose it because, as we have heard a week ago from two members of the Save Main Street Theatre Committee, the community consultation was a box-ticking exercise. The Community Reference Committee passed one resolution in its five meetings over the years, and that was to share a contact list. The members of the Save Main Street Theatre Committee fielded that they do not have been consulted on this project. This is the community group that has been the single most important community group on this project. And a week ago, two members of that committee told us that they had been pressing for this review for two years. They have not been listened to by council. They have not been listened to by staff. They have ideas that I believe are worthy of consideration. One of them said to me last month that he believes 
that they can develop a plan by which the theatre can break even operationally. We're currently budgeting for a $700,000 a year loss. So, Mr Mayor, look, it is a fantastic design. It is worthy of 80 or 90%. But if we have the opportunity to make 95%, I believe we should. Given the ideas that have been presented to us and the criticisms that have been made through the community reference to this council over the years and have been fobbed off, have not been fairly considered, and these are their words, and we should be in no doubt the Save Main Street Theatre Committee wants this review to happen. It does not want this amendment passed. Unless there be any doubt, earlier this month, the Save Main Street Theatre Committee met. Ten committee members met. Eight out of the ten want this review. One isn't too sure, one is opposed. But think about that, eight out of ten. This is a pretty clear message. And those of us who subscribe to the Save Main Street Theatre Committee or support Main Street Theatre newsletter would have received in the last week their endorsement of the review the Council Award and I are trying to put forward. This is about two things. This is about, first of all, trying to get the best design for theatre we can, because we only can do it now. We can't do it in six months' time. And 80 90% is very good. And look, it is a fantastic design. And if this is the outcome, I think we'll be 100% in our support. But given the information we have and the people involved and the ideas that they present, we have a possible option here of developing a design that is worth 95%. I believe we should take that, because years down the track, we can't. And the second thing is very philosophical. Do we want the residents of this municipality to be in control of this council or not? Because this is a project closely associated in the public mind with the Save Main Street Theatre Committee. They approached us. This wasn't council awards in my idea. This is about us empowering the residents, particularly this committee that has contributed a great deal. By council's own records, has contributed architects' ideas, business plans over the years. And they feel that for the last two years, <clears throat> their ideas have not been listened to, they've not been fairly considered. And at the end of the review, what I want is not simply the best design, but I want that committee to know that it has been fairly considered, fairly listened to. And then the people of this municipality can get a sense that actually the residents do control and the residents do matter. And it's not simply a matter of a staff member deciding what he believes is best to the exclusion of all others. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lennon. Councillor Kay, questions? I have, yes, I have a question. Indeed, for you, far Mr. away. Mr. Mayor, to um, Director Watson. Hello. <laughs> there you go. Um, I just want to confirm with you um, the majority of the project, in my belief, um, moved in a positive direction the last term of council. Would I be correct in saying that, Director Watson? So you've referred to 14 years. I would say the majority of the work has been done in the last four term, so the last term of council. Can you just confirm if that is correct? Uh, Director through Watson. You, through you, Mr Mayor, I think that's a, a fair conclusion. The bulk of the work to get thank to this you. point was done in the last term. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kay. Any further questions? No. Not oh. Councillor Taylor. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, question also for Director Watson through you, Mr Mayor. I'm um, just wondering if we are under time pressure right now in this project. I uh, respect that this project has been going on for a long time, but is breaking ground imminent on this project? Do we have the capacity and the ability to start this project immediately? Is this something that we need to resolve urgently now, or could we take another four weeks um, to perform some kind of mini review. Director Watson. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, I'm pretty sure we covered all of that at the last council meeting. Um, the project isn't funded. We are contracted to finish uh, the design process, which is documented to 70% as of the day before the last council meeting. Um, but at the moment, the project is unfunded. But, you know, as I said at the last meeting, there is penalties for... Um, for delaying the conclu com uh, conclusion of the project. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Councillor Ward. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, through you, my question is to Director Watson. Um, Director Watson, could you let us know if all of the former councillors and council um, had the business plan for the Marion Street Theatre um, prior to approving any of the um, funding towards it? the business case. 
Director, Director Watson. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, again, I'm fairly sure I've answered that in previous emails to councillors, and I think you um, partially answered that question yourself, Mr. Mayor. Um, the last council did not see um, the Hookridge report, the, the business case review, uh, but all of the council and the community reference committee saw the Kugel, original Kugel business case. So there is a business case which all of the councillors have seen, and there is a business case review, which as of Monday this week, all of the councillors have seen. Um, now because council hadn't made decisions about options of how to manage the business case, um, the committee reference committee was, was advised that they couldn't have that report until council had made a decision about it. And that report can't be finalised until you know, things like final costings of the project uh, are determined. So um, it wasn't appropriate um, and not helped by a number of changes to local government elections late last year, um, wrapping up those sorts of issues. Councillor Ward. Councillor Ward. Thank you, Director Watson. Sorry, a follow-on question on that. So does that mean that the council approves something without the full um, details of the project, of the business plan? Director Watson. Uh, through you, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the project was recommenced by way of a notice of motion, and I think it was a notice of motion, but it was certainly a resolution of council, which was to commence construction on a certain date and, and to design a particular thing. Um, the project did not start in the, in the way a normal project would with a business case. Um, so no, um, there wasn't a business case when council started this project, other than the business case which the community had prepared. Um, which uh, the council at the time decided to prepare their own. Thank you, Mr. Watson. Sorry, through you, Mr. Mayor. Is that a normal practice, Mr. Watson? Director Watson. Um, I don't know that it's appropriate for me to criticise a decision of the council, which was a valid decision at the time, and it was my responsibility to implement. I'll just chime into that. Um, I must concur with Director Watson in that particular case. There was a resolution, and I believe Councillor Chateau may well have moved it, that there was a certain point in time which construction was meant to commence. That was done in, in a previous term of Council. So I hope that helps inform you further, Councillor Board. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Smith. Mr Mayor, before I um, speak in support of the... Um, your notice of motion. I just wanted to get a handle of a couple of the implications, which if I could please get clarified. Through you to Director Watson, if I may. In, is this for a review? Let me just, we've answered some of these. I'll just cross some of these out, sorry. That's, That's all right, you can take your time. In regards, to the review of the whole design that this council was briefed on by the architects on the 30, 31st of January, is this, is this correct on the whole design of the theatre? Director Watson. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, um, that's, that's correct. Thank you. And um, if I can supplement that, the last yes. council would have been briefed a number of times, including before it adopted the final set of plans for lodgement of a DA, as well as at various points of time through the project. Indeed, Councillor, indeed, Director, what's it, the previous council was briefed on that a number of times. Councillor Smith. Thank you. I'm just going to be standing up here for a little while. So That's all right. Make now. yourself comfortable. It's all good. Did any councillors indicate that they were unhappy with that design at the time this was brought to us? Director Watson. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, in terms of the meeting of the 8th of February, um, nobody raised any concerns about that. Um, there was no negative questions asked. Thank you, Director. Councillor Smith. Have any councillors sought answers to any specific issues that might have with the theatre? Director Watson. Uh, th through you, Mr Mayor. Um, bearing in mind that um, about a week after that briefing, there was a resolution that effectively Stop. discontinued staff involvement from the project. Um, we wouldn't have been able to ask, answer detailed questions, but Nobody has asked them anyway, other than the provision of particular documents by the two ward councillors, which have, with the exception of one which we provided on Monday, everything else was provided shortly thereafter. 
Thank, Thank you, you, Director. Councillor Smith. Have you received any communication from the Support Marion Street Committee indicating a concern with the elements of the design? Director Watson. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, um, and that was why I was looking at my diary entries. The last time that I had contact with the, um, the Save Marion Street Theatre Committee was at 2 p.m. on Wednesday, the 29th of September. A Zoom meeting convened by then Mayor Councillor Cedric Spencer, um, John Townend, Harry Lonigan, Di Yerbury, Peter Kelly, Janice Bevan, Mayor Spencer, then as he was, and myself. And that meeting concluded by the Save Marion Street Theatre, effectively concluding that it was a good project and we should get on and build it. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Councillor Smith. So, to the previous motion that was put forward and that we're acting upon, how many staff would need to be directed onto this to address these um, demands that are literally being requested at the moment by Councillor Lennon? Director Watson. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, um, at, at this particular point in time, we don't know exactly what uh, the Save Marion Street Theatre Committee and, and the ward councillors are looking for. Um, so it's hard to answer that question until, I mean, in the event that, you know, that the meeting or the motion of, of February 15 continued, or as was intended to be supplemented tonight, there would have been a meeting between various parties. At that point in time only would we know how much work was involved. Um, so I, I, I really can't answer that question whether I mean, at this point in time, we don't need, we're, know whether we're talking minor changes or, or major changes. Thank you, Director. Councillor Smith. Mr Mayor, through you again. Do we know how many people sit on the Marion Street Theatre Committee? Would it be fair to say there's 16 or even 20? Director Watson. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, I can't answer that question. I think we heard earlier that uh, 10 people met um, earlier this week or, or last week. Um, there has only ever been two members of the Save Marion Street Theatre Committee on the Community Reference Committee. But I understand, happy to be corrected, that one of the other independent members of that committee has since joined Save Marion Street Theatre Committee. Thank you, Director. Councillor Smith. Thank you. Um, I won't bother, I was going to ask their names, but I'll leave that out of it. Do we know what, what level of their expertise are in designing theatres? Director Watson, if you can. What qualifications would be good? Uh, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, given that I don't know the membership of the committee, I can't answer the question, but uh, it's not my understanding that the members who sat on the co Council's Community Reference Committee had particular um, qualified expertise in theatre management or, or operations. Thank you, Director. Councillor Smith. Mr Mayor, I'd just like to ask another question here, just in relation to uh, the Marion Street uh, letter that Councillor Lennon was bringing up. Um, can you help me with this one, please? How am I to read this email that the Support Street Marion Theatre Committee sent out to its supporters on Wednesday 9th of March? They state, the committee has a number of concerns about the TZ TZG design since it was first released, including need to use planned 60-seat performance area behind the stage to store props and scenery and converting the 60 seat downstairs area to a flexible 60 to 120 seat space. Director Watson. Through you, Mr Mayor, um, to some extent those questions were addressed in the briefing to councillors um, of 8th of February. Um, uh, Director Watson, I'm I haven't finished, sorry, sorry. Okay. if you're happy for me to keep going. Yeah, I'm indeed, happy. indeed, far away, Director Watson. Um, the, um, the space on what we're calling um, we'll call it level one, which is the, um, the small theatrette with the dressing rooms out the back. Um, there is a, a flexible space adjacent the bar and cafe, which can be separated off um, from the cafe with acoustic um, folding doors. Now, 
I think that was covered off by the consultants where they said that those folding acoustic doors don't necessarily give you full um, acoustic um, uh, coverage um, in terms of the... Um, and the advice we've got about that theatre is that, you know, that 60-odd 60, 60 seats, whatever it is, is, is what the market is looking for in that space. Um, in terms of the space behind the, uh, the stage, um, that was set up as the... Um, uh, what some of the com community members on the reference committee were looking for was a recital space, and that is that space. So it's, um, it's not just a rehearsal room and workshop, it doubles as, as a, um, um, a recital space. Um, councils would be aware that there was some exploration of whether that could be um, expanded into to, um, using the stage as, as a part of an expanded area. And the answer to that, again, was also no because of the need to... Um, to maintain acoustic qualities in that space. Um, now, it's something that um, we did explore um, subsequent to that briefing, but again, I haven't been able to um, to come back to councillors because of the, the nature of the um, resolution from 15th of February. Um, but there was some questions raised of the consultants in relation to the ultimate capacity of the theatre. Um, and based on BCA requirements, that is 395. Um, so some of the things that people were looking for in this space, i.e. Um, 400 seat theatre and another 120 seat space downstairs um, simply can't be provided on the site. Um, as soon as you start interfering and changing the size of the spaces, um, councils will be aware that there's lifts and stairs and exits at the front of the building and the back of the building. And as soon as you can't start combining spaces and putting extra walls up, um, you're interfering with, with access and egress um, and councillors would be aware that uh, the reason we picked 249 is because, again, you go, go above 249 in your main auditorium and you change the requirements for the BCA, particularly in relation to um, amenities and facilities. Um, so what we've done is we've squeezed a fair bit out of the space, um, bearing in mind that the community wanted us to work within largely the existing four walls and councillors would know that we in fact took one of those walls down and expanded the building towards the park um, to get extra spaces. Um, I did concede at the last meeting that, uh, to be fair to, to Mr Townend, he'd always wanted a larger main theatre, um, but there was different interest groups in that community reference committee that all wanted different things, um, and it was impossible to achieve everybody's requirements. Um, bearing in mind that the, the, the project scope started with a main auditorium and the downstairs th space, and since then we've added on a number of other supplementary spaces to the point we've now got about seven different spaces. So, um, you know, we did take on board what the community reference committee wanted. It didn't meet every single person's individual requirements, but uh, um, everybody mm. understood why we landed where we did. And there was no objections when um, Peter Tonkin gave the final briefing to the committee and to council before the DA plans were signed off. Thank you, Director Councillor Smith. Thank you, Director Watson. You sort of started eating my next question a little bit. So I'll just, um, just in regards to the um, design theatre with both community and professional spaces that conforms to a complex BCA in planning requirements, it respects the resounding um, surrounding residential area, incorporates its local park. Is that correct? Director Watson. You, Mr. Mayor, I think that's uh, probably a fairly fair summary. Um, that's fine. It's a difficult site. We've got uh, originally there was you know three houses adjoining the site. Now there's a number of unit blocks. We've got uh, far more residents in far closer proximity than you know than the original the Soldiers Hall and in fact the original theatre that ran for the for the you know 40 odd years before that. Thank you, Director. Councillor Smith. On, uh, just a question on another point. The design, does it respond to council's directions from planning consultants for theatre size? It offers a point of difference from the concourse on the hand in Chat on, on the one hand in Chatswood and the Glen Street Theatre in Belrose on the other, offering something different. Do, do we meet that criteria? Director Watson. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, um, that is correct. We were definitely looking for a point of difference. Um, and in fact, coincidentally, um, I've had conversations with uh, people in Northern Beaches about Glen Street, and um, the advice we're getting there is that they're struggling to fill a 400-seat theatre. 
Thank you. Um, now that I've answered all those questions, I'd actually like to speak for the motion that's put before us from the Mayor. Um, I must say, I've been on this council now for five years, and I think there's five councillors here that have actually been through this whole process, that have lived it, that have got up to spending this type of money because quite often the council does not like to make... Uh, councillors tend to not like to make the tough decisions. In this particular case here, it's a very difficult place to actually put a theatre. It's in the middle of residential um, units, houses, well, not many houses actually, mostly units, lack of parking and all the rest of it. The, does, the name of it was, was called Save Marion Street Theatre for a reason. It was to save that theatre and that's actually what has been gained here with what um, the council staff have put forward. I just... I would like to address um, Councillor Lennon's statement that he's got eight people um, wanting this to be looked at. So basically what we're pondering here, we've got eight members of Marion Street Theatre that are asking this council to literally drop what it's done, move forward in engaging more experts, more cost, more money, more time, at the risk of losing this, which is, I just want to put this um, down as a fact to every councillor here, it is a risk of losing it. Even though we haven't got the funding for it, there will be something else that will bunny hop in front of it if we need it, if this doesn't get moving. So I um, employ implore all councillors to get on board and support it. It's a great initiative. It's It fits the bill. It literally has come to a much, um, a much better proposal than I ever thought that was going to come out of the place. And to be quite honest, I was very surprised to see that the push against moving forward with this. So with that, I would please ask um, all councillors to get behind the, uh, the Mayor's uh, amendment. Notice most of this. And um, I think with that, I think we've had two for and two against. A question, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Smith, only one against. So you can't Thank do you. two for two against. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Councillor Taylor. Sorry, I just had a, another question, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Um, during this detailed design period, has one of the objectives for the consultants and architects been to optimise the commercial viability of the theatre? And I note that the um, current prediction of the ongoing annual loss is around $700,000. Um, and I'm just wondering, has that been a factor in the design process? Is that one of the objectives to minimise that loss for this project going forward? Director Watson. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, as I stated earlier, this um, project was initiated with a resolution to get on and design it and build it. Um, we've been trying to make sure that what we've been designing and building is going to be um, as viable as possible, um, but that wasn't one of the original objectives I was given, no. Um, and uh, we've tried to minimise the subsidy. The subsidy is in line with subsidies that uh, some of our surrounding neighbouring councils are paying for their theatres. Um, so we've certainly put those operating models effectively to let council know what it would be looking at at the minimum in terms of a subsidy. Thank you. Uh, just, so just to confirm, it hasn't been an objective of the, of the project to minimise the ongoing costs of this theatre, the commercial viability of it. Director? Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, that's, that's not what I said. Um, I said it wasn't one of the original scoping objectives I was given, but we have always tried to make sure, as a design team, that it was as viable as possible. Mm. Councillor Taylor, is that Thank you. clear? Excellent, thank you. Councillor Nye. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I'd, like to support in, I'd like to speak in support of this motion. Now, look, j just as some background, I really understand the, the push for a review. We had this safe, well, we had this Marion Street Theatre Reference Committee. It met five times. However, between the fourth time and the fifth time, it was about 22 months. So I, I can understand the sentiment from the public where, look, we've created this reference committee. Where we're consulting with the community, but in reality, the perception is that it didn't feel like it. it 
we, we just didn't meet. So I understand the background, I understand why there are some people who, who wish to have more input into the design process. Um, and I also completely support the, the, um, the right for councillors, whether they are new or old councillors, to question past council decisions, whether it be synthetic surfaces or bowling greens or major projects like this. We all have the right, in light of new information, to, to call into question something in the past and take a different approach. Now, having said that, um, I, I speak from my own personal experience with um, this whole Marion Street Theatre initiative um, in the last four and a half years. Now, I, I remember attending quite a few of the soirees, and the message about four years ago used to be, look, it's run down, it needs some love, it needs repair, if only we can get council on board, if we can even get council to spend $6 million to repair the theatre, that would be fantastic or even better, let's expand the theatre and pay eight and a, get council to pay eight and a half million dollars and it'll be fantastic, it'll be great for everyone. Now, that's quite an attractive message that it'll be six million or eight and a half million, et cetera, and a lot of councillors got on board. I even got on board and during May 2018 it was at much personal expense because I had all this hate mail, but that, that's something else. But the thing is, what I've found with my personal interactions with the Safe Marion Street Theatre Committee is that quite often the, the assumptions were quite optimistic um, in terms of costings of that, oh, it's only six mil, it's only eight and a half mil, no problems. In terms of the ongoing financial viability, operational plan, all that kind of stuff, they'll say, oh yeah, we can make it break even, all that sort of stuff, no problems. And then, so we asked, look, can we have the business plan? Can you send it to us? And they sent it to us and, and the, the 10 councillors at the time may or may not remember that I was, I sent this, you know, massive two, three, four, I don't know how many page email with all these questions. Basically, sort of, uh, I found that there was a lack of rigor in the business plan. I, I found that, look, there's, there's sort of flaws and consistencies all over the place. It's a bit over optimistic. And whereas on the other hand, when council staff went through it, it was a lot more rigorous, all that kind of stuff, and now we're close, instead of six million or eight and a half million, we're looking at 20 million with some losses, but a lot more rigor behind the analysis of how much will it cost, all that sort of stuff. Um, I, I do understand if members of the community, uh, of the community look and they go, oh, well, it looks like it's, it's overestimated, it looks like you won't break even, all that kind of stuff, we can make it work. I understand the sentiment, but I don't, I don't believe it. After what I've been through the last four years, I think council staff have given it a good shot. Um, there probably are, is space for efficiencies, but that doesn't have to be at the expense of putting the design on hold. Um, there, there are other reasons which I won't go into where I otherwise would have supported a review, but in the current circumstances, and it's all in here, but um, I, I won't have time to go through. But basically, I think, um, it's a good time now to just progress with the project. We've already maxed out the site as much as we can without breaking another threshold and making things a lot more expensive. Um, I, I think, look, we have the opportunity to make it better in the future. Um, I, I understand the sentiment from some of the councillors that they want to review it again. I truly do. Um, but from my own personal experience, we've been there, done that. And um, I, I just wish that the reference committee met more often. I mean, 22 months between reference committee meetings is poor. No wonder the, com the community is freaking out a bit. No wonder the community feels like they haven't been listened to or heard. Um, if I was the chair of the committee at the time, I would have called for the, meeting to, the, the committee to meet more frequently. So I thoroughly support this motion from the mayor and I encourage all councillors to support it. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Nye. Councillor Ward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The motion that was before us on the 15th of February was supported by most of the fellow councillors and today we seek the same motion that was stated. The only pro problem here was that we could not proceed with the motion that was um, approved on the 15th of February, so we're back here again. I just wanted to make that comment. Marion Street Theatre people um, Harry Logan and John Townan spoke at the public forum on the 8th of March. 
in one of his comments, and if I may, Mr. May, just quote, Mr. Townend, um, if I may quote him, says, on December the 12th, 2019, SMST representatives had a meeting with councils GM and CFO to discuss some ideas and concerns which included th theatre capacity, the need for business case funding and operational models. In December 2020, a business case was received by council management and as far as we understand has not been seen by councillors or the MST CRC. In February 2021, I presented our concerns at the Council Forum and the Director of Strate Strategy responded the email by the presentation on February 12th. I again responded in April, offering to discuss SMST concerns with current design. My question is to, um, through you, Mr. Mayor, to Director Watson, did this occur? Director Watson? Um, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, sorry, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Director Several Watson. It is the 21st century, so it's okay. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. I think I did that at the first meeting of the year as well. Um, uh, the short answer is no. Um, I wasn't involved at that first meeting. I wasn't given any instructions out of the first meeting. Um, it certainly wasn't appropriate for me to be having meetings with individual people out of a community reference committee to everybody else's exclusion. Um, so the only meetings I had with members of the committee uh, were th through formal committee meetings of the whole um, and going to the reason why there was a, a large gap between meetings, um, the matter was under development um, assessment. There was nothing to talk about. Um, the, the DA was being assessed and it was not appropriate for the committee to, to meet while the matter was under assessment. Thank you, Director. Thank you, Director Watson. Councillors, no further debate or questions. We've exhausted all avenues of discussion. Well, Councillors, uh, it's my honour to sum up on this particular one. I thank you for your input. It certainly has been very refreshing and, and robust coming from all directions. Uh, Councillor and I, I must commend you. I do recall that when you did do that analysis and it was quite in-depth and you did find um, deficiencies. So I will thank you for that. And it is important that we do go back and revisit things. And I, I commend all councillors for their input to this. I hope that all your questions have been answered. Um, thank you to Director Watson. Certainly with that almost two year delay, I believe that has helped clarify the reason why there was no reference committee meetings, because it wasn't possible and there was nothing to report. And I now put the motion as displayed. All those in favour? That is Councillor Spencer, Councillor Kay, Councillor Wheatley, Councillor Smith, Councillor Nye, Councillor Pettit, against Councillor Alec Taylor, Councillor Greg Taylor, Councillor Ward, Councillor Lennon. I declare it carried. Move to business without notice, subject to clause 9.3 of the Code of Meeting Practice. There is none. Questions with notice, there was one which has been answered with a late memorandum. There are no inspections and that's about it. No extra reports. And there are no extra reports, General Manager? No extra reports. Declare the meeting closed at 8.11. Thank you, councillors. Thank you, gallery. And thank you to those online. And thank you, staff.